welcome back everyone for our last presentation before the panel we welcome marty gorman author of 17 books and publisher of 35 years most recently at the helm of city of light publishing she is well known for working with local authors and we are very happy to have her talk about book promotion at every step of the journey now i'll turn this over to you marty you can share your screen and start your presentation thank you we're going to do a screen share, except I'm on the wrong slide. Share. Good morning. Hello, everyone. How are we doing here? I've totally enjoyed all of the speakers. Um, what a wonderful, um, what a wonderful program. It's been a pleasure to participate actually year after year, and it's a great pleasure to participate virtually. To tell you that I, I kept thinking I was gonna be in the library this morning. I was planning things uh, around that, and here we are, virtual. Um, I would like to talk a little bit about um, how the difference between um, focusing on one book to one reader versus selling many books to many buyers. And it's just a different way of looking at, um, it's just a different way of looking at, um, at publishing. So I'm with City of Light Publishing, we're a hybrid publisher. And, um, and we do things a little bit differently. Um, we try, we, we do a very good job of replicating what the, the big uh, uh, book publishers in New York City, etc. do. Um, and we like to do things well in advance. So I can advance this. There we go. So you you know how to promote your books. I'm not going to tell you how to do that. Um, in fact, we've had several speakers today who've given very good advice on how to do that once you have a book. What I'd like to talk about is what happens behind the scenes um, in that ethereal realm um, of publishing, behind the scenes where you don't where you don't often get. Um, so you know how to promote your book once you have one. But there are so many ways that books are promoted um, before you actually have a book. So we're going to take a look at a couple of those. Um, some of them are accessible to self-publishers. Others are difficult. But you should know that this is happening. So there's one book, one buyer versus many books, many buyers. And that's a choice that you're making when you um, enter this realm. And another thing to keep in mind, and which you'll note, is that it really takes about two years to publish a book. And you'll see why in just a second. So um, getting started. So the first thing that happens to promote a book in the world of, of City of Light publishing and, and most publishers is that you report the deal to Publishers Marketplace. And that's a huge um, boon. Your book is seen by industry people. Um, so other publishers and agents and um, booksellers, everybody keeps their eye on Publishers Marketplace. So by reporting the deal, that um, that you have um, um, actually sold your book to a publishing company, the publisher reports it, then you are already getting the word out that this book exists. The next thing that we do is we report that title to the distributor. Um, and the distributor in our case is IPG. Um, there are two big distributors. Uh, there's Ingram and there's IPG. There are others, but those are the two main ones. Uh, Follett and Baker and Taylor and all the others buy from these two. Um, and when we report a title to a distributor, we assign subject categories, keywords, metadata. You need to do that for your book regardless of how you proceed. Those are really important things to get lined up from the very, very start. What subject categories, what keywords, what metadata. We also then compare, uh, identify comparable titles. Um, so what, what is the competition? What do you, what do you, what other books are out there that do what your book does? And you have to, of course, define your audience. This is all part of promotion and, and, and marketing long before you have a book in hand. So if you define your audience, you're also defining why to buy. Why would you buy the, who, who's going to buy it? Why is it going to be purchased? Um, next up on my to-do list on a new book that I've just um, signed a contract on, is to assign ISBNs. That's the individual identifier, the unique identifier for that book. And that's how I will be able to refer to each format of a title 
um, hardcover, softcover, ebook. Um, I'll be able to refer to it using the ISBN, and I will know that I will be talking about that, that we'll be referring to the exact same book. And the next and really important thing that needs to happen is we need at least preliminary front cover art, not back cover, but front cover. And um, that's when you can really start um, talking about a book. So Cayuga Island Kids, uh, which is pictured here, is a very good um, uh, example of all of these. When we reported uh, Cayuga Island Kids deal to Publishers Marketplace, we had uh, over a dozen inquiries. Um, and actually, we ended up getting a lot more um, manuscripts over the, uh, over the transom. Uh, when we reported it to the distributor, we discovered that it needed to be reader reading leveled by Lexile. And that helped us um, do the metadata for that book. Um, we identified some very interesting comparable titles and altered the series. This is Cayuga Island Kids is um, by Judy Bradbury. Many of you may know her. Uh, this is the first book in her series. Um, this one is The Mystery of the Barking Branches in the Sunken Ship. And it's the first book in the Cayuga Island Kids series. Um, so by identifying comparable titles, we were able to determine dimensions, uh, page length, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Judy defined her audience very, very well. We assigned the ISBNs to the soft cover, hard cover, and e formats. And this is the awesome <laughs> front cover art. And it's, it's almost preliminary. So that's um, Cayuga Island Kids is an excellent um, example of how we created this promotional platform. Uh, by putting, by assigning ISBNs, you know, uh, the book goes into books and print. Bowker is the, produces the Bible of everything that's in print. You want your book and books in print. And so assigning an ISBN is very important. Um, hmm, can't change the slide. I don't know why. Let's see here. Uh, once you do all that, you enter what I like to call the ARC era. The ARC era is a minimum of six months prior to the release date, and it's a critical, critical time in the publishing of a book. Um, the first thing I do when I have an ARC, an ARC is, let me hear it, you all know what an ARC is, right? Advanced review copy. So um, as soon as we have an advanced review copy, so you not only have a front cover, but you've got an interior as well. It doesn't have to be perfect, but the title page needs to be very, very accurate, as does the verso of the title page, the copyright page. Um, and then you've got an arc. It can be imperfect. Don't wait for perfection. You need to get an arc out. And the first place I send an arc out to is the Library of Congress for cataloging and publication information. Um, and so this advanced review copy goes to them. They catalog it. And uh, two to three months later, I get the um, cataloging information that will go on the copyright page will print in the book. That's why it's important to get it out so early. Um, and that puts it in the system. Then the Library of Congress knows your book exists. How important is that? Um, the next thing that happens is it goes into Edelweiss. In our case, um, the Edelweiss information is propagated directly from IPG, or distributor, and um, Edelweiss is the professional platform where uh, acquisition librarians and bookstore buyers go to look for what they're going to purchase. Um, my sales and marketing team with IPG actually uses snippets, they're called, uh, from Edelweiss to push books like Chickadees in the Moon Above, for example, out into various sales channels. Um, so they'll be uh, promoting uh, books like Chickadees, which has already been cataloged by the Library of Congress. It will not come out until March 1st of 2021, but it's been, it's been cataloged. Um, it's been on Edelweiss and um, the sales and marketing team knows that uh, to not just market it into bookstores and libraries, but this book actually will also go into gift shop or specialty shop channels uh, because it's a beautiful gift book. So um, Edelweiss is really important for, to get it into those multipliers where you're selling not one book to one person, but um, many books, like multiple copies of your book, to multiple multiple sellers. So imagine in the gift shop um, arena, Hallmark, for example, um, Barnes and Noble um, in the bookstore arena, libraries. There's a library system with you know 37 branches. They could buy 37 copies of it. So we're talking about many books selling into um, many different units. 
Um, and finally, I want to talk about NetGalley. And NetGalley, um, Edelweiss is, is for libraries and bookstores primarily, but NetGalley is where reviewers who, bona fide reviewers who really review books um, consistently and regularly, um, go to look for books to review. Um, and again, I, I have an agreement with the distributor that puts every title that I report to the distributor into NetGalley, but you can actually, um, have, you, can, you have to pay for it, but you can have your book available for download to reviewers at no charge, primarily in electronic format, but also in hardcover. So that's getting the book out to influencers, to book reviewers who really spend a lot of time reviewing books and have um, a very big following. So NetGalley is an important place for your book to be minimum six months prior to release. Like Chickadees in the Moon Above, isn't that gorgeous? Sarah Simon, a uh, local um, author and artist. This is the most beautiful book, I think. Uh, we're very excited about this one coming out next spring. So then what you're going to do, you haven't started talking to individuals yet. You're going to try to reach bookstores and libraries. Um, and those involve professional review sources. Um, so four to six months prior to official release date. And indeed, Publishers Weekly will not, they have rules, they will not publish a review of your book, no matter how fabulous it is, if they receive it less than four to six months prior to the official release date. So it's really important to, um, to have that ARC, that advanced review copy, and have it available to send out to places like Publishers Weekly, Library slash School Library Journal, it's a single unit, goes into the one it's supposed to, Forward, Bloomsbury, Hornbook, Midwest, the professional review sources, the ones that librarians, acquisition librarians read religiously to determine what goes into the collection, that bookstore buyers peruse every day to see what's hopping, what's good, what's, what is going to be in demand, what's getting good reviews from high level professional review sources. Free speech is uh, my example for this one. Um, free speech and, what you, and why you should give a damn. Uh, my favorite uh, spring 2021 release, it will come out um, uh, after the election. <laughs> uh, it's an unbelievable book um, and it's already been submitted. It has its cataloging and uh, publication information and all of the previous slides. Now it's gone into Publishers Weekly. Library Journal is looking at it. We've sent it in for the New York Times review of books. Uh, it's into forward. All of these places have already received uh, an advance review copy of this book. And the ACLU is also looking at it because it's their bailiwick. And we have um, quotes coming from uh, elected officials and um, free speech advocates, the Rutherford Institute, etc. So this is a good example of how far in advance we need to work. We have a full interior. Um, it's actually it's still in indexing, but it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a great example of doing it well ahead of time and why, why you need to have a book so, so far ahead of time. So this has been a lot of work. You've already done a lot of promotion and marketing, particularly into multipliers, into many books to many places instead of one to one. But you finally have final files. And um, so six months prior to release is when you really need final print ready files. They should be ready to upload to the printer. You don't have to upload them that minute. If you have a little more time, you can live with them and continue to perfect them. But at that six months, uh, five to six months prior to release, you should, your files should be ready to upload to your printer. And at that point, you do your ebook conversion into all four ebook formats. You need to be EPUB, iMobi, Kindle, and PDF. Um, and those really need to upload immediately. The sooner you have an ebook available, uh, be it for sale or simply for promotion, the better off you are. Um, and uh, five to six months prior to publication is the ideal time. You can tap into so many promotional opportunities, Kobo and, and um, Prime, and there's just a multitude of opportunities if you have an ebook available. And, and frankly, all books in this era of COVID um, need to be available in ebook format as well as in print. Now, we, after we have final files and you've got an ebook, now we start addressing readers. We haven't even talked to readers yet. So we're going to reach readers. So six months to launch, there is a lot of work to do. 
and um, it can start earlier than this, but a minimum six months to launch is you need to claim your Goodreads author page. Goodreads is an incredibly valuable source of reaching readers. Readers who love to read are on Goodreads. You need to be an author on Goodreads. You need to have an author page. Um, you also have an Amazon author page, and if you don't, you need to have one. You could have your own website, and you could blog about your book, and that's a very, very good idea. If you have e-commerce, you can sell your book off, the, off your website as well. Um, this is the time when you start reaching out to individual reviewers, and you want to reach for the top for the influencers, the ones who have the greatest number of followers, bloggers, podcasters, the, the people who reach individuals who want to know what to read. You also want to reach out for your back cover quotes, uh, if you haven't already, um, but involve them in the marketing and promotion uh, process. And at this point, you're going to be doing your media pitches as well. So for monthlies, you know, you, you need to be at least um, three months out to pitch a monthly publication. For uh, weeklies, you can do it a month and a half, four to six weeks out. And for dailies, you need to be at least a week or two out. Um, and that, of course, uh, the latter goes for television and, and radio as well. And the most important component, social media, right? Um, social media is your friend, it's your ally, it's a powerful tool, and you can talk about and tease your book prior to this six months to launch, but, um, but this is when it really begins. So, one month to release. Oh, in fact, I forgot to mention. So, Confessions of a Gentleman Killer is a very good example of this. Uh, Johnny Payne, uh, an LA uh, author, has done a fabulous job on Goodreads, and he's he's um, almost quadrupled his his followers uh, by posting there. His Amazon author page is very um, active. We've got a website up for him, and it's looking gorgeous. And he has all of his books on it, not just Confessions of a Gentleman Killer, which is truly a remarkably lyrical book. Believe it or not, it came out on um, October one uh, of this year. Um, he's got lots of influencers going. Um, we don't have back cover quotes for him. It wasn't necessary, but we have uh, some very, very good reviews. The media pitches are going in a variety of directions, including uh, four of his hometowns, which is nice. And social media has been amazingly active with Instagram taking a major role. Um, and the, the, pre the launch was a world premiere of a play of his that was done virtually around the world, actually. And we we launched the book on October, it was October 15th was relaunched, and the launch was on October 16th. Um, and so we did a play and a novel at the same time. It was a great launch. But one month to release, what you wanna do is build up and generate demand. Monster in My Basement by um, area uh, award-winning uh, artist, Heather Lynn Harris, and her cohort, Dave Preston, uh, right up in Rochester, uh, is the best example of a one month to release plan that I've ever seen. Um, there was a series, you, what you're trying to do is build up and generate demand, of course. So you need, you need organic social media. So you need to actually be posting, creating that conversation. Paid social media is a very good idea. Uh, one month prior to release, um, paid social media is um, a good idea. Leveraging, and in that social media, what you're doing is you're leveraging your reviews and your media hits. You've already asked for them. Now you have some, now you get to post them and share with, um, with folks on social media uh, what people are saying about your book. You have conversations with your readers, you post events, you have events, virtual now, and you wanna remind bookstores and libraries that the book is, um, is going to be available, they should order now. Ah, and finally, release. We have a book. And that's, and Albright, there is no better example of a release. Um, uh, Mark Goldman, area author Mark Goldman, award-winning. Actually, Albright just got another award, um, New York City Big Book Award, uh, about two weeks ago. Um, so the release, uh, the the release of Albright about a, two years ago, year and a half ago, was a three-day extravaganza at the Albright Knox, the Birchfield Penny, and. And the, and the History Museum. It was an amazing, amazing three-day launch back in the before times when you could still have real events. So, and that's really when your real work begins. Uh, all of this has just been lead up and then you need to actually sell the book and utilize all your tools. So, questions? I'd love to take some and um, I hope that I haven't overwhelmed. Great, thank you, Marty. Um, we do have some questions, um, which our audience members can post in the chat. Um, but to start off, how has the pandemic affected the publishing business? 
Oh my goodness. <laughs> it was catastrophic for 2020 releases. There was no spring uh, release. All the books, uh, all five of the books that were scheduled for release uh, in the spring of 2020 went on hiatus, on hold. In fact, the actual print copies got hung up in the supply chain uh, problem, couldn't get them into the country. Um, and they had to be postponed until June. And frankly, during COVID, it's, it's been, it's, I found that that people are consuming books like they're consuming food. They want comfort books. They want Gone with the Wind and Goodnight Moon. They're not looking for a new experience. It's been daunting for new books to release during this time. Books, people are buying books, people are reading books, but they're not, they don't seem to be listening to anything but COVID and elections. So it's hard to talk about new books. It's hard to get the word out and to get people talking about them. So I found COVID to be really catastrophic. We've gone into all virtual events. We've gone into all eBooks. Um, and we have um, a dozen books coming out in the spring of 2021, which is daunting as well, because if you can't sell books in 2020, how do you pay the printer for them? So it's, it's, it's been a difficult time and yet, it's been a very fertile time because I'm receiving many, many, many uh, submissions of excellent works that people have spent the COVID time um, working very hard on and producing some incredibly interesting work. So while it's not been good on the business side of things, it's been very good on the creative side of things. That makes sense. And I hope 2021 is a bit better. <laughs> we all do. <laughs> Uh, someone asks, um, you mentioned metadata earlier in your presentation. Could you explain what that is? You know, metadata has a variety of definitions, but I use the broadest one. Um, and metadata is not just author, title, ISBN, number of pages, dimensions, etc. That is technically metadata. But metadata, the most important metadata are the keywords that you really have to determine well the uh, BISAC subject categories, very, very important metadata. You have to get into BISAC and see what those um, subject categories are and utilize BISAC, B-I-S-A-C uh, categories. And um, the, so it's, key, it's keywords, it's subject categories, and then it's all your bibliographic data. And in your description, there is metadata. So when you write the description of the book, you really need to um, be um, utilizing the words that will draw people to your book, just like you do on your website, where you need to, you need to include keywords that will um, allow the search engines and algorithms to recognize you. So I, I hope that's a reasonable explanation. There are big, de big definitions of metadata and little definitions. I think using the larger definition of metadata is the better way to go in publishing. And um, from a publisher's viewpoint, do you prefer that a literary agent be used for a memoir in particular? Is that essential? Um, City of Light is a hybrid publishing endeavor. And although we do use some traditional contracts, which um, we, we don't pay advances, and that's a problem for agents. And um, we, we, we will, there are some books that we can publish without, um, without partnering with the author. Hybrid publishing is somewhere in between self-publishing and having an agent and a, New York, um, and a New York publisher. We do all the work of the New York publishers, um, but we partner with the author. It's, it's a, we form a team. So we often share the, the pre-publication costs and we share um, um, all of the, the marketing as well. So agents have difficulty with that paradigm. They're used to getting a percentage of an advance, for example. If we don't pay advances, how do we work with, a, with an agent? We're currently, that said, working with two agented works um, and the agent is just fine with that. So I'm going to say that it's difficult to work with agents, um, but some of them are amenable to it. And then it's, it's, it's fun to do that because then we have a bigger team. Um, but as a hybrid publisher, they don't, we don't, agents don't like us as much. <laughs> For, I think this will be our last question. Um, do, does City of Light Publishing rely on in-store sales? And if so, do you guarantee returns to entice Barnes & Noble and other bookstores to stock copies? Is that worth the effort? Yeah, we don't rely on in-store sales, but we give our authors access to bookstore and library sales in the US, Canada, and the UK, including Australia and New Zealand. 
So we can reach into institutional uh, buyers like bookstores and libraries around the world. And it's a, those are very, very important. It's a, that's a very important thing that we offer our authors. We also sell direct. We have a great website and we do direct sales. We do events. We do lots of different types of sales. Um, but to offer that level of distribution is a real, is a real boon. Um, and we always um, accept returns. Um, you must accept returns. Not accepting returns pretty much um, puts you off the table. Um, we accept returns through Lightning Source uh, and Ingram. We accept returns through uh, IPG. We have to accept returns and we do withhold a small percentage of royalties to cover um, those returns to make certain that it, it all comes out in the end. Okay, and I think we do have another question. Um, there's so much to do before a book gets published. How can authors avoid becoming like avoid becoming overwhelmed by all the steps in that process? I think that that not doing it all alone, but but teaming up, even if it's with uh, um, Barb, for example, or um, your initial speaker. I'm sorry, the name just went out of my head. Um, I, I think that sitting all alone is it with a book is very very overwhelming. Um, whether it's with a, a, a publisher or with some sort of group, I think that you need to plan it out and to be able to brainstorm. I think you need almost a Gantt chart. I mean, you really need to plot it out well ahead of time and know that you're dealing with a very long lead time to try and pop a book out, um, to have the book arrive on your desk two weeks before your list or the night before your initial release date is, is, a, is a, it's a strategy for failure. It limits your ability. It, it only allows you to sell on Amazon, basically. Um, and anybody can sell on Amazon and your book should be on Amazon. But when you do it alone without going through um, larger channels with distribution, you're basically limiting your sales to your own website, Amazon, and the bookstores that you can walk to and the libraries you can talk to. So it's, 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 it's limiting for your books. Some books are perfectly amenable for that strategy, but books that merit a larger audience, um, the way to do it is, is through full-scale distribution. That makes sense. Um, thank you so much, Marty. That's all the time we have for questions. Um, and this concludes our presentations for today. And we will take a five or, well, a, yeah, a break until 11.25 when we will start the panel discussion, um, which will be featuring Noah Falk, Kim Krug, Alyssa Palumbo, and Lou Rera. We'll see you in a few minutes.